Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. Welcome back to another video. Voyager Digital has four main publicly traded cryptocurrency competitors. In this video, I want to compare Voyager Digital to these four companies, not just on a fundamental level, but analyze their actual valuation on a per user basis to determine exactly which one is trading the cheapest, how that relates to Voyager, and where Voyager would be at if they traded at that same valuation. So if you end up enjoying this video and potentially find some value in it, please consider subscribing. And if you are new, feel free to check out the first link in the description down below to get access to my full analysis into Voyager and a bit of an introduction that links to my video. So with that all out of the way, let's get into it here, guys. So here we have it. This is the spreadsheet that I made here, highlighting users, valuation, dollars per user, and then how that correlates to potential price upside in Voyager's actual share price. So as we know, Voyager currently just hit 1 million users. All of these numbers are in thousands, keep in mind. So one is 1,000, 1,000 is 1 million. The valuation of the company currently stands at $3.4 billion dollars, which if you divide those numbers up, you get roughly $3.4 thousand dollars or $3,442 dollars per user at Voyager based off of where their market cap is trading today at a share price of right around $18.38. Now, what I want to do here next is take you through these four main companies, you know, kind of discuss them a little bit and go through exactly how that correlates to Voyager on a, again, that per account basis. So first and foremost here, we do have SoFi. Now, SoFi isn't a direct competitor to, uh, to Voyager in the sense that SoFi is a much more kind of, I want to say, lending platform than anything else, although they are expanding into cryptocurrencies and stocks. Their bread and butter is lending and refinances and, you know, kind of with the end goal similar to Voyager in making that life style financial app over the long run. Now, looking at their actual users, they call them members. They just hit under 3 million in their latest quarter, 2,937,000. Uh, and their current market cap is sitting at right around 18 billion, just over. And that gives you a per user, kind of in terms of how much market cap you're paying per user, of $6,254. And that's 81%, almost 82% higher in what you're paying for Voyager. Now, all things considered, SoFi has a much more stable business model involved in lending games, something that's not really going to go away anytime soon. And if you do enter a period of uh, potential doubts in the crypto market and the stock market, SoFi is going to continue to do well. And that's kind of why, at least in my opinion, the per user kind of a valuation here in this sense is higher. Now, you do have to consider that at these levels, Voyager does have more growth potential. Voyager, you know, with 1 million users versus SoFi at 3 million, who's going to be easier to double their users? Is it going to be Voyager to add a million or SoFi to add 3 million? You know, you kind of look at the numbers here as the law of large numbers kicks in, it's going to be easier for Voyager to grow, which kind of makes me think, hey, you know, they're trading at a bit of a discount here. You know, if, you, if they did trade at the same valuation, you'd have them at over $30 per share. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens here over the next little while. You know, one thing that we do have to understand about Voyager is that their revenues will be much more volatile than pretty much any company on this list, except maybe big digital. So I, I, I do think you do have to add a bit of a discount for that and a bit of a premium to the other companies. But at the same time, Voyager is smaller and you know they have very similar, if not greater ambitions to be that lifestyle financial app, have that stable revenue and, and again, become that company over the long run. So that's SoFi. Obviously, you know, I, I did do an analysis on SoFi. I'm a you know big believer in the business, but very interesting how it's trading at a, a bigger premium and on a per user basis. Now, the next one here is Robinhood. Now, Robinhood's a little bit different because they kind of count their funded accounts as accounts that not necessarily have money in it, but instead actually have a credit card or bank account linked. It's actually the bank account. So, you know, 
you know, do what you will with that information. We're still going to use the 18 million. We get a, a valuation currently of just around 30 billion. Now, keep in mind, Robinhood's valuation has come down literally 50, 60 percent in the past couple of months. In addition to that, they've kind of grown their users pretty decently. But you get a per user number of 1.6 or $1,600. Now, this is below where Voyager's at. So, you know, this list isn't, you know, phenomenal, right? It's not all massive gains on the potential upside when comparing to these companies, but you got to understand that Robinhood doesn't make as much money from their actual users, and they're under a lot of scrutiny with their payment for order model, which again, that's highly debated within the United States. And if that does end up getting a, you know, kind of potentially taken away, that is a massive, massive risk for Robinhood, which is why you do see this massive discount put on their actual uh, potential valuation and the amount people are willing to pay per user. Now, again, this company has potential. Do they have much growth potential in terms of users at an $18 billion valuation? Probably not to be completely honest with you. Can they get it to 30, 40 billion over the next five years? Yes, they probably can. But at that same time, Voyager is probably going to be able to take that to three, four, five, six uh, million. Sorry, I said billion for <laughs> Robin. No, there's not 30 billion people in the world, at least not yet. And I don't expect that to happen over the next five years. So kind of given all of that, again, you do have to consider Voyager smaller company, bigger pathway to growth, Robin Hood, the crypto side of their business isn't the best. You know, they do have good price execution, but they don't have a lot of cryptocurrencies. You can't withdraw your actual cryptos and, you know, they don't have that wallet yet. And, you know, that is something they plan on adding in the near future. But again, consider Voyager is actually doing better than Robinhood right now when it comes to cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrency revenue. They did more revenue in Q3 from, again, all of Voyager, which is just crypto, than Robinhood did from their cryptocurrency business. So again, phenomenal to see that. Coinbase, again, the biggest company in their, in this space right now. Now, the thing about Coinbase is that they don't have like one great metric when it comes to actually figuring out funded accounts. They have either verified users, which tells me nothing, or active members. Now, the thing is, I don't want to use active members because that's not really doing the company justice, to be honest, because, you know, we're not using active members for these. We're using pretty much funded accounts. So, you know, what I did here, you know, at 73 million verified users, uh, of course, it's going to be significantly below what Voyager is because, you know, Voyager has 2.7 million verified users. So, you know, if you want to use that number, obviously you increase this 3x and you're paying very similar levels to um to Coinbase in terms of a uh, uh, dollars per user. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same ratio that Voyager has for verified user to funded account. And, you know, that's kind of roughly one third. So at roughly 22 million so-called funded accounts, which I think is pretty reasonable. And at that $70 billion valuation, you get roughly $3,240 per, uh, per verified user, very similar to Voyager, at least in this situation. Now, again, keep in mind, Coinbase has less growth but they're much, much safer. And that's why their valuation is at where they're at right now. People favor reoccurring revenue, which is a big part of Coinbase's business model, given how you know they're growing their subscription and service-based revenues substantially. And that's expected to continue growing even if we do go into a bear market and that, you know, kind of does push them away from that conversation of potential declines and fees because of the fact that they'll be so integrated within blockchain and cryptocurrency from that other side of their business. Now, looking at actual, um, the last one here, Big Digital, this is a bit of a smaller cap company. Now, they're, you know, much smaller than any of the companies on this list. They have 80,000 verified users as of the second quarter of 2021. So that's again, ending June 30th. And they haven't really reported anything since. So we could expect this to be higher. And I'll go through that in a moment here. But again, at, at 80,000 verified users, which isn't funded, keep that in mind, they're sitting at right around $384 million in terms of valuation on the US side, or $4,800 per user. That is substantially higher than any company other than SoFi. And if Voyager traded at that level, you'd have roughly 40% upside, $25 per share. Now, if you use active users, it gets a little bit uglier to be completely honest with you guys. You know, $20,000 per user, 
upside in Voyager's price of roughly 500% or again, over a hundred dollars in upside. Now, again, given the small size, it will be easier for them to grow. And if you want to use a bit of a, you know, cause you know, active users isn't necessarily the best metric. So if you want to go, let's say 384 divided by maybe like 33, you know, you still get $11,000 that you're paying for each user. Now, sure. That's number, that number rather has probably come up, but even if it has, you're paying substantially more, right? So this is making me kind of scratch my head a little bit and saying, you know, hey, maybe it's time to potentially kind of cut down on my big digital position, which, you know, I did buy this back in what was it, April or May, you know, we'll see. They do have US expansion on the time horizon. I think at this point, as long as cryptos continue to do well, I do think big digital will be bundled in that. But there is no doubt in my mind that their valuation is substantially higher than anyone in the industry. And, you know, if Voyager traded at those levels, it would be a, you know, quite a phenomenal story. So that's kind of all of that. That's kind of what I have to say overall in this video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. But it's really interesting to see how Voyager is positioned against these companies. I, I, I do believe that over the long run, Voyager will compete very well with them in terms of the products that they offer. So using funded accounts as a metric for valuation may be something that I could do moving forward. And let me know what your thoughts are. Again, this is kind of the first video, but... You know, if these companies have similar potential in terms of product launches and revenue per user, using this metric may give us a good idea as to how the market's evaluating all of them. In this case, SoFi first, Voyager second, kind of tied with Coinbase. Then you have Robinhood and then kind of lastly, Big Digital there, which is, again, a bit of a caveat since they are, you know, just Canadian U.S. expansion will be big for them, but their product isn't the best, to be completely honest with you guys. So, you know, that's kind of my piece. Thank you all so much for watching. I am pre-recording this video on Friday morning, going away for the weekend. So hopefully this will be up on sometime on Saturday or Sunday. And, uh, you know, there is one major competitor to Voyager that is not publicly traded that starts with the letter C. And if you want me to go through the actual kind of comparison of the two business models and how big of a risk this company poses to Voyager over the long run, let me know in the comment section down below and let me know by hitting that like button as it is, you know, it is something that I do think we have to talk about. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you found some value, please consider hitting that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.